What's up YouTube? I'm here again with another video. Uh, today I have a chance to interview a peer that works at Collins Aerospace. Um, this company is a subsidiary of Raytheon Technology and they are, are a large aerospace manufacturing company where their headquarters are located in Charlotte, North Carolina. Within the aerospace industry, they're known for creating aerostructures for nacelle systems, flight control surfaces, naval composites, and other structural components. They also create avionics systems for fighter aircrafts, cable management, and content systems. They are also known for creating mechanical systems, which include landing gear systems, actuations, propellers, as well as satellite components. Before I show you guys the interview, if you guys could hit the like and subscribe button, I would greatly appreciate it. And stay tuned, I got some good content ahead. What's up, YouTube? I'm here again uh, with another exciting video. And I'm excited to um, introduce you guys to a peer of mine. Um, I'll allow him to introduce himself. Um, Han, if you can introduce yourself and by stating um, your name, uh, where you're from, and your official job title, uh, that would be great. Hi, everyone. My name is Han, and I am a senior engineer at Collins Aerospace. And I'm born and raised in Orange County, California, where I reside now. Awesome. So you're a senior, can you say your title again? You said you're a senior mechanical engineer? Yeah, uh, I'm a senior advanced manufacturing engineer. All right, so manufacturing. What, what that means is our team actually helps R&D, research and development, create new processes and technologies for production use. And we work closely between them as well as the production team, like the manufacturing engineers. Okay, sounds good. Overall, can you say what your work, what working there is like? What are your day-to-day -day, um, duties like? Do you use any, What are the typical softwares or applications that you use at your job? Yeah, so my role involves a lot of uh, hands-on work, mm -hmm. and a lot of my projects, actually, all of my projects involve robotics. So oh, that's pretty dope. What do I do? I I work. In our particular factory, we use KUKA robots, which is a particular brand of robots. And in order to get them to do specific tasks, you have to program them. So they have their own language. So there's a little bit of programming there. And also there's a little bit of design work. So we, mm. when we wanna make end effectors to put on the robot to actually do a specific task. We'll design that in Katia, and then we'll Tia. either make that in house if it's simple enough, or we will outsource it to one of our manufacturing partners. And then we will assemble those and integrate it into the robot to do our particular test. So I could oh. be programming one day, or I could be doing some design work. And there's also some electrical wiring going on. So it really encompasses all of the different disciplines that we learn in school from design to electrical to mechanical. So I really enjoy it because of the well-rounded hands-on aspect of my job. Yeah, that sounds pretty interesting because you know, usually jobs, they'll have you um, tasked with specific skills. Like you, if you're a CAD guy, you're a drafter and that's all you do. Or if you're a programmer, you're, you know, that's all you do. So it's, it's pretty cool that you have the hands-on experience as well as uh, some of the uh, technical skills. Uh, what type of robots are you working on? Are these like humanoid robots? Are these like the robot arms that you see in manufacturing plants that place things on um, assembly lines? Is it like that? Yeah, so our products that we make at Collins Aerospace, uh, specifically our division, this Collin Aerospace, Collin Aerospace actually has multiple divisions. They make things from the landing gears to the cockpit instruments to the interiors of the airplanes. Uh, and we actually make nacelles, which is the casing around the jet engine. So that's kind of like the equivalent of the hood of your car or just the sheet metal around your car. And as a result, as you might imagine, our parts are very big. So our robots are also very big. So we oh, buy wow. one of the, the larger robots. If you stand next to them, the robot can reach its arm probably like 10 feet high. Uh, so it, it is taller than us <laughs> yeah, and they wow. can also lift very heavy parts. Now our parts are mostly composites. So we don't need the robots to be that large. 
to do the heavy lifting, but rather just because our parts are very large. And we have robots that can uh, collaborate or work together. And what I mean by collaborate is you have two robots work on the same part, or they oh, wow. have two tools that are doing different tasks uh, on the same part so that you have to make sure that they are working together and not crashing into each other. Wow, that's pretty cool. I didn't know you had robots that work in, 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 in synchronized with each other that's pretty dope um i don't think i've seen that i know we have at our job we have some uh they, they ordered a robot robotic arm to do rivet installation for the airplane so that's that's pretty dope that you guys make that um so what do you like most about working at your job it sounds like you have a cool position uh i think the what you were saying earlier is the fact that i'm not just doing one particular task. Previously, I was a design engineer. That's how I started. So I was pretty much on the computer all the time, but I wanted to get more hands-on as well as more into the actual manufacturing space. So that's what I like is the fact that my position allows me to be involved in these new projects all the time. Uh, we help make it mature, but then once it's mature, we work with the production team to integrate it into their process. Then we continue to work on new projects. So we're always working on new projects all the time, but we're also still supporting it. So that's what's exciting about it. That's dope. Yeah, man, that sounds like an exciting position. Um, so with any job, there's always, a, you know, the opposite side of it. You know, what do you think you like the least about uh, being in that specific position? Yeah, so I think probably this has to do with me working in an industry that has a lot of regulations, aerospace. Yeah. <laughs> well, a lot of red as, tape, right, slow process. Well a bigger company, things do take a lot longer. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's probably just the more frustrating part of it is it's not going to work at the same speed as perhaps uh, Apple with their phones releasing every single year. Uh, yeah. we, our product timelines, yeah. we have to start planning for uh, a product that may not be released till almost 10 years from now. So mm. as a result, we're working a lot longer. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say that the task itself is longer. It's just that there's a lot of approvals and a lot of checks that we need to do since we are very critical equipment that will be carrying people. So mm -hmm. it's understandable, but it's also kind of frustrating when things take a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, we, I know that feeling, man. The aerospace industry definitely has a crawl pace, you know, because of safety and regulations. And it's one of those things I had to learn to deal with. <laughs> so what do you think is the coolest thing you've seen? I know you've had robots and everything. Is there anything that stands out the most, uh, any, any technology or? Uh, yeah, so our company is actually integrating more and more robotics into composite manufacturing. Previously, ah. and, and even now, most of the work is still done manually with people actually handling the composite parts. Just because the nature of composites, it's, it's not like you could just take a end mill to a block of metal and make right. something. It's it's very, uh, you, you have to like work with the composites in a certain way. It's, it has to have a certain temperature range that you need to work with. So uh, we're, we're doing more of that. So that's what's exciting is that I can see in my position, a lot of the projects coming down the line involve more and more robotics with the actual creation and layup of composites, not just processing. That's interesting. And for, yeah, for those of you who don't know, composites are, you know, referencing carbon fiber, fiberglass, Kevlar, those are all examples of composites. Yeah, you're right. Composites are very unique in terms of that manufacturing process where it, it, it requires a lot more delicate handling and nuance and so, you know, high resin buildup, stuff like that. So that's interesting. I didn't know that they were doing more of a robotic approach to that. I think everything's becoming more automated in general, but um, yeah. that, that's pretty dope. Um, 
so I want to speak more about your experience with getting into Colin Aerospace. I know you have some experience with other companies. So what was the application process like for you? Were you reached to by a recruiter or did you apply online or? Oh yeah, so uh, I actually started at Pratt & Whitney, which is our sister company of Raytheon Technologies. And they're located in Hartford, Connecticut. And I just applied online, uh, received the call to attend a Super Day event. And what that meant is they would have multiple managers as well as many of the applicants arrive at a stadium and it's kind of like a speed dating networking session <laughs> you would just speed meet day. different managers and then yeah uh, from the end you if you're lucky you get one or multiple offers so i had a great experience there it was a great way to start off they had a rotational program where you can Ooh. try positions so i was designed I was also in structures role. And uh, from there, I get a little bit more exposure about the company as well as the different type of engineering roles. So definitely recommend it if you can get into a rotational program, which usually is offered to entry level engineers, you mm -hmm. should do it. It's, it's a great yeah. A lot of companies I, I hear are doing that now. And that sounds awesome. My company yeah. didn't have that, but I would have loved to have been able to sort of filter through a couple, but that's yeah. dope that you had a chance to do that. Yeah. Um, what do you think made you stand out the most? Were there any projects you worked on, any experience you had to get this job? Was there anything that they pointed out or liked the most in your interview? Yeah, I think it definitely helped that I was in a student design team at my university. Mm. It's called mm, a yeah. solar growth team. And uh, you might've heard of Formula SAE or yeah. Baja SAE. We were mm -hmm. like that, but with a solar powered electric boat. So oh, okay, okay, okay. I joined that out of pure interest. Uh, yeah. And you, you should, because in the end, it's kind of like working in another engineering company while you're still at school. Uh, mm -hmm. If you enjoy it, it will show up when you interview with the managers. Yeah. I definitely enjoyed that. And a lot of the skills that I learned there, like how to actually machine parts after drawing it on the computer translated yeah. into real life job skills. Yeah. And as a result, I would say that probably helped me the most uh, on top of having good grades. Yeah. Yeah. I always say, you know, you always have to maintain, you know, a, a good GPA, but I always tell people you want to stand out. I'm always pushing on my um, other videos. Hey, be a part of student organizations. Formula S D was what I was a part of and I loved it. Um, and that's what actually got me my job here. It's, you know, with advertising these projects I worked on. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. That's pretty dope that you had the chance to work on solar boats. I haven't. Yeah, I haven't done that or, or, or met anybody that. So that's pretty cool. Um, now, going to reality expect reality versus expectations uh, is something that I think, uh, you know, um, I, I always like speaking about because I want to give people the reality of what it's like working in an industry versus what it's like, what you think it's like while you're in academia. Well, for you, what do you think, uh, you know, how, how does the industry differ from what you thought it would um, while you were in academia? Yeah, so uh, when I first started down the path of doing engineering at school. I think a lot of us, myself included, might have envisioned like we're wearing the hard hat with, with the, glaze, uh, the glasses and we're welding something. Yeah, and, you're building something every day. <laughs> right. and, and, and there there is a little bit of that, like in my role, because I am working more with R&D, but in general, uh, that's not what you're doing. Those are more of the technicians. That are actually exactly. Doing. There's people the designated department. for that specifically mm -hmm. yeah so as engineers we're we're more on the planning the development so that means a lot of meetings and uh time in front of the computer uh but it doesn't mean that that's the only thing you would be doing again it depends on your role uh i decided i didn't want to do that 100 percent of the time so i kind of moved myself more toward the manufacturing space I know some of my coworkers who are manufacturing engineers, they actually sit in the factory floor and they're away from their desk half the time because they're addressing any issues that might come up on the line. floor. So I, I would say the expectation that I had prior to working was I would be all hands on all the time. 
Yeah. Uh, but the reality is that's like maybe a little portion of it, but there's still a lot more of planning, meetings, and PowerPoint presentations. <laughs> that's a good point. That that was the point I liked the least. Man, was the meetings, the presentations, all the different just the documentation everything's got to be a specific way for auditing purposes so that was uh what i did not expect i did not account for that i should say but yeah if, if you search for the right job there are jobs out there like yours where you can actually have the theoretical where you can have the applications where you use the software cad katia and then also actually get the hands-on um experience when you're on the manufacturing floor i think that's like the perfect balance most yeah. engineering jobs that i uh, that i know aren't necessarily like that so you're you, you're pretty lucky it sounds like but, um... Right. And, and, you know, uh, the other thing is I didn't have as much of a, uh, let's say, rude awakening because I had internships when I was in college. Mm. That's another mm. thing that probably helped me get my full time job. Yeah. Is yeah. So I already kind of knew what to expect in the workplace. And each of those was kind of like a rotational you can kind of think of because mm -hmm. I have a particular position and I was like, hmm, okay, do I like this? Or maybe I talked to another intern. I'm like, oh, I, I think I like what they're doing. Let me try to focus on that next year. And mm -hmm. interns are, mm -hmm. interns are a great way to just get that exposure in the workplace as well as the different positions. That's a great point because I didn't have an internship actually in my undergrad. It wasn't until my grad school. And when you have it, you do get the, the real, you start to get the real world experience and, and what it's like to wake up go to a you know a nine to five job what it's like being you know developing those uh, interpersonal skills and you start to figure out what more you like um and because I, I realized for me like i thought i wanted to be in a design position then when i got into the industry and i saw what they did which was mostly at a desk i was like oh i, I don't know if i want to be a designer at a big company so i realized i actually like being in my position where i'm a liaison and i do a little bit of cat work i do floor investigations i do um a little bit of a uh, you know just uh, design changes and stuff like that but i'm not just at my desk all day so um i always always push that apply to internships you know and a lot of that is is is, is, is just taking the initiative and while you're in college um to do that so no thanks for sharing that that was pretty dope um lastly i always like to ask do you have any words of wisdom for aspiring engineers anything that you would tell somebody who's in college right now and uh, and you want to give them a heads up to you know uh to what, to what is, to how to get a job or how to be successful or anything? Uh, I would say find out what you love and do it. And that you may not know, but that's just part of the thing to, to just be open-minded and explore. Uh, I, I think when I was applying for jobs and internship, I was always trying to go for what people were saying like the best so i was like going for the big well-known companies but yeah i never worked at a small company and i've also heard there's a lot of great uh, opportunities there and especially if you want to have kind of that wear multiple hats role i mm. hear that is something that is more available at a small company so uh i i did have different industries that i was involved with but it's always been a big company so in a sense, I was a little bit more close-minded to that, but I would encourage everyone to just explore what interests you and find out where it goes from there. That's great advice. I always say, figure out what's, what you're interested in by trying different things while you're in college. College is the best time to try it. Try different student organizations, try, you know, start your own side projects, play around, you know, if you're into 3D printing, buy a 3D printer. If you're into programming, do do things on on summer break or winter break that allow you to explore what you like. And then, like you said, uh, I like what you said about not gravitating towards always the big name companies. You know, you got the Boeings, Lockheed, uh, right there. Everyone knows the big companies, but I, I was that person too that thought, oh, I got to go work at the big company. That's where all the fun stuff's happening. And you realize the smaller companies are where you are able to put on the multiple hats and you're able to do things that you wouldn't be able to do at Boeing where there's a hundred thousand people and you're, you're a number and you're giving a very specific task and you got to stay in that lane. So that's, that's some really good advice. Um, and I appreciate you sharing that, but, um, no, just closing out. Um, I want to say thanks, Han. I appreciate your time and, and all the information you gave and, um, I wish you the best, um, in, in, in any of your endeavors and your future endeavors. Thank you.
And uh, good luck to everyone. I hope this was helpful. Oh, it was. It was. It was. It was.